tomorrow before the cameras turn on the NIL space. Mm -hmm. I know I made some money, bro made some money. It's like, you don't know until you know. Man, I got hit over the head. Yeah, me too. And I like, ain't even know it. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm lending people money. I'm, you know what I'm saying? Buying what I want. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. And then Uncle Sam come knocking. What's up? Come here. And you got to pay it or you, or you want to go to jail. It's like one of the two. Mm -hmm. And you going to do it because, you know, it's just the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. But it's like, I feel like even now, like our schools got to do better. You know, like our Educating elementary. People yeah, just, like. Because I said to myself, the, the sad thing about the NIL is it's a great thing. I, I want everybody to get their right. paper. But you got dudes getting all this money. That's not going to the league. They might that's not real. make it to the league. And how you going to get it? Like, how you going? You spent all the money. So now you hit over the head. You out of you out of school and you you owe them three hundred, four hundred thousand in taxes that you ain't even know about. Because as soon as the money hit, because ain't nobody teaching these people right. financial literacy Absolutely. and educating them about had, the tax. I've had you take one financial class my whole life. One. And I was my senior in high school. I didn't learn. So no. my platform is why I'm not a NIL expert on the legalities of it. Common sense tells me anytime you earn some money, you get a check. When they give you a check or earn some money, that's then created a paper trail. Right. So a good rule of thumb is if I if someone pays me a thousand dollars, I want to save thirty to thirty five percent of that in a savings account so that um, you'll have the money when you gotta pay taxes. Mm -hmm. Because there's two things that we gotta look at. Will you receive this NIL on your social security number? Mm. Or there's some student athletes, due to how much they're making, they've gotten savvy and they've created um, a company, a LLC, right. in order so that they could do it as a business. Mm -hmm. And to my understanding, I think that's the best way, but it's also based upon what scale or true influence ability that you have on how much money you're making. Right. You know. What's up, student athlete world? Lester Sanders here from Canton, Ohio home of the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and this is I Am Student Athlete. What's good, student athlete world? Welcome to the I Am Student Athlete podcast. I am Lester Sanders, your host, coming to you from Canton, Ohio, home of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. This is the podcast where we coach you to be triple-double, Mindset student athletes, which means to be great, number one, in the classroom, number two, on the field of court, and number three, in the game of life. Be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss anything. And I have one ask. Share this episode with somebody because this is a movement to empower student athletes everywhere to take their games to the next level. Lucas, yes, man, sir. there's so much conversation around this topic of image, name, image, and likeness. N-I-L, name, image, and likeness. So I think we're going to just dive right into this conversation, man. What you think? I love it, man. I think it's uh, huge. I think it's the wave of the future. I think it's it was a long time coming. A lot of student athletes, a lot of athletes gave their life to the games that they played, male and female, and they left college, some with an education. Mm -hmm. Some with just some injuries, mm -hmm. some with a little bit of both. Um, and now it's exciting to know they're going to get paid for this. Yeah, that's cool. I, sh I I threw your name out there, but let me go ahead and throw a shot to my production team, Lucas Live Media. Yes, sir. Lucas Tyndale. We make this thing. We making this thing happen. Yes, sir. All right. So, Lucas, before I give my perspective on this NIL conversation, I want to give a practical um, definition of NIL, and then also that other term that's out there is called an NIL collective. Mm. So according to the athletic.com, NIL stands for name, image, and likeness and has become a universal shorthand for college athletes' ability to become paid endorsers and monetize their success outside of their school-funded scholarships and benefits. You know, we got a lot of definitions. Or, well, the word is being thrown out there. But from this show, this podcast, I want to make sure that people know the exact definition what NIL is. So here's the definition of NIL collectives. NIL collectives are organizations that fundraise via large and small donors with the intent to direct that money to a school's athletes through NIL deals. Collectives are not formally associated with schools or athletic departments themselves, but they do exist to benefit certain programs and their names and staff. 
Some school officials, including athletic directors and coaches, have openly directed fans to donate to specific collectives. For this NIL conversation, I'm going to use a practical life skills perspective. Like, you know, it, it's funny to think about, you know, like this is a huge opportunity um, that student athletes uh, for over decades have been wanting. And so now that it's here, I think it's important to try to give a proper perspective. So I'm not going to try to get a perspective that I'm a, a NIL sports attorney, um, that I'm an NIL expert, but I'm going to give a try to give a like a layman's term, a practical overview of what student athletes that I think should be focused on in order to take advantage of this opportunity. Um, the NIL conversation is an excellent opportunity, I believe, Lucas, for student athletes to be educated on what I call their true influence, ability, and financial foundations. So when it comes to this, this term that, I, that, I've, that I've come up with is true influence ability. You mm. know, there's a lot of student athletes I'm hearing, like, they're trying to get the bag. They're mm. trying to get the NIL bag. And the main thing is you got to keep it in perspective because when it comes to business and marketing and endorsements, companies look for, for student athletes that are going to, number one, bring in the bag for them. So – you got to be able to be realistic about your true influence ability. So, like, for example, a Caitlin Cart or a Travis Hunter, they're able to command more NIL deals because of their notoriety and their fame and just they got the spotlight on them. And I say that because with working with student athletes, I've heard conversations where they're thinking like, oh, I, this, this, this whole waterfall of money is just going to come into my pocket if I get a scholarship or if I get on a college team and just like anything else, there's levels. Right. And so we got to be able to, you know, just throw out there that certain NIL deals is going to come depending upon what level that you're on. Cause like a Caitlin Clark going to have way more deals than just that. Let's say uh, Joe Blow at mm. the university of <laughs> state university, <laughs> big state <laughs> university. Shout out to Jesus Shuttlesworth. Right. Right. <laughs> And, and so it just, it's just really student athletes just got to, you know, just keep working in the classroom, working in their sport, and keep focused on the process, and you never know what's going to happen at that. So, Lester, let me ask you a question. Yeah. Um, one of the things that you, you've talked about this before, and I know you talk to student athletes around the country about this, mm -hmm. um, social media <laughs> Right. Yeah. That that is your first arm of marketing where mm -hmm. you're putting yourself out there, showing yourself as yep. a person. Right. Mm -hmm. um, Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley, who became more controversial, they didn't have social media. Nope. Nobody knew what Charles Barkley was thinking, although he's become a very popular commentator. He went through a period right. of time where he was expressing opinions and people didn't like him too much. Mm -hmm. You know. I can imagine what he would be like if he had uh, social media <laughs> right. back in the day. Free reign. Free no, reign. Nobody did he got to an answer to. Yep. Man, and it could have hurt. It could hurt the bag. It's almost right. like if you think of a bag as a bag of gold coins, mm -hmm. if, if you cut a hole in the bag or a bag of sand, if you cut a hole in the mm -hmm. bag, the sand falls out, the mm -hmm. coins fall out. So it seems like some student athletes aren't as aware that – they may be cutting the hole in the bag before they were even handed the bag. Mm -hmm. Or as soon as they get the bag, they got they cutting a hole in the bag, trying to be cool, trying to fit in. Talk to us a little bit about just your mindset around, again, social media. And now, how does that look when it comes to managing your image? Because your image is now aligned with a business and a brand. Sure, sure. I mean, I think first, all student athletes have to identify what is their brand. Okay. And they got to make a distinction between what's marketable to the masses versus maybe what's marketable to your immediate culture or your neighborhood mm -hmm. or your team. Mm. Um, so we got to, we got to be honest and have, you know, straightforward conversations that certain activities may not be marketable to the masses or for certain companies at, where other activities, in other words, let's use the word is your, is your social media um, posts clean? Mm. Or do you got, or do you have a dirty post? <laughs> so when I say dirty post, I'm saying, are you showing yourself maybe with alcohol? Mm. Or are you showing yourself with counting money? 
or are you showing yourself in environments that might compromise your overall brand? Mm. And so students got to make a conscious decision about what type of uh, online identity, because at the end of the day, you want to have a clean social media identity because, number one, that's the first uh First way that colleges can recruit you. They're going to look at your social media page. You can go on social media and talk to coaches uh, and, and listen to coaches. And they're, they're really focusing on what does what type of brand is this athlete portraying? Mm. Is they trying a positive one, a negative one, or are they in between positive and negative? Mm. But I think it makes perfect sense, especially if you say I'm trying to reach the bag to have a clean business brand that makes you marketable for companies. Because in order to get the bag, that means you gotta repre you're representing this company who is paying you to endorse their product. So nobody wants sketchy activity. Mm. Nobody wants any illegal activity. Nobody wants activity that's gonna compromise their brand. And so I've even heard conversations where, you know, student athletes might say, I should be able to say what I want and do what I want on my social media. Mm. Well, you can. You can. But in the real world, there's going to be some consequences. Some people are going to deal with you. Some people are not. But I would just advise for all student athletes, have the cleanest brand possible and then start doing some study on marketing and branding on your own. Mm. Wow. I I <laughs> love that. School is not going to teach you everything. Ooh. Success is not going to just fall into your lap. So there are some things that you have to begin to start investigating on your own, especially when it comes to what will make me attractable for company brands. Because the beautiful thing that student athletes got today is they got Google. Right. It's a search engine. Okay. They got YouTube. YouTube is really a search engine. So right. there's a lot of stuff and information that's at their fingertips where back in the day, man, we used to go to the library for mm, everything mm, or mm. have to look up encyclopedias, but that information was too old. Don't age yourself, <laughs> brother. Don't age yourself now. Talk about the Encyclopedia Britannica. Yeah. Right, but we got Google now. <laughs> we got Google now and AI and everything yeah, else. And, I then, mean, and, and, you know, yeah. and then also just, just being able to approach people and ask questions yeah. about professionalism, about what companies are looking for, about what companies aren't looking for, to make yourself as marketable as possible if you're serious about trying to so-called get this bag. I love it. Stop. So don't cut a hole in the bag before you got the bag. Don't cut a hole as yeah. soon as you get the bag because you're spending all your time showing off your money and mm -hmm. your cars and your alcohol and you underage and all the things that young people are often tempted to do. Yep. And I love what you said about school because school is not preparing us to be a brand. School is preparing us to be the widget makers for the brand. Mm -hmm. Right? School was built to say... We need workers for the most. I mean, in, at the at the lowest levels, it was like, well, teach them what they need to know, and make sure they can come in here and make the the cars and the ketchup and the, and the whatever it was that mm -hmm. was being produced. Right. And they weren't thinking these young people, uh, 17, 18, 19, 20 years old, are going to be representing brands. What Michael Jordan did was unbelievable, yeah. and he could only do it as a professional, but unbelievable. Right. One more quick question for sure. you. Sure. When you think about um, those that have gotten in trouble in the past, mm -hmm. the Reggie Bushes of the world, sure. prior. And then um, we want to send a shout out to all the student athletes who have done what they're supposed to do and okay. have presented a clean brand that was marketable to the world as well. But I like where you're going with this. I, 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 great point. I just wonder your thoughts on it overall. Like, I remember when it was happening, there was no NIL, but I was like, man, this seems crazy. Like, yeah. I, as a regular person, if I, I think Terrell Pryor, what, he sold some socks or signed yeah. some socks or something, yeah. some shoes, some socks. I was like, if I sign some socks and I sell some socks right now, sure. nobody cares. I can set up a lemonade stand. <laughs> I can set up a sock stand. I can sell anything. And nobody's going to ask me any question because I was just a regular person. Yep. Right. I had just I, I went to college or at one point, you know, I was just working. I wasn't in college and I mm -hmm. was a young person, say, around his age. And I was like, man, because he plays this sport and he brings in billions of dollars and Reggie Bush and, and many others mm -hmm. bring in billions of dollars to these organizations, these right. universities. They are in trouble for making a few dollars. I, I just thought it was insane. What was your thought at the time as those things were playing out? And what is your thought about it now? You know, you know, when those things were happening, you 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 kind of caught up in the moment. Yeah. But you know, my perspective now, um, in the position and the platform that I have with being able to educate student athletes, the first thing that came to my mind when you mentioned that 
is there's a there's a statement that I that I that I base my life upon, that I found my life upon, and I share it with the student athletes that I work with, is don't let your emotions overpower your intelligence. Mm. Don't let your emotions overpower your intelligence. Wow. So in the concept of student athletes who may not come from a lot of wealth, it's easy to let your emotions get the best of you to say, hey, I just want to sign this and I get the get this and I get this money. Right. Or this organization want to do X, Y, and Z with me and I'll get paid. So you got to begin to start doing that term that we use in the business world is due diligence. Is this, number one, a company that I want to be associated with? Mm -hmm. But then you can't sometimes make decisions out of your lack. Mm. Because sometimes if I make a decision in haste, Whew. like signing something that I'm not supposed to sign or do something that I'm not supposed to do because I don't fully understand the contract of this national letter of intent that I've signed mm. or understanding all the language that goes along with NIL deals, business contracts. Um, you don't want to put yourself in a position where you compromise a future opportunities and check this out and future earnings. Mm. So like an example I would give, okay, yeah, I can make $5,000 for this appearance or doing something, but will it compromise my ability to make 20000 down the road? Mm. And Ooh. those numbers, we can give a ton of examples of those numbers going up. But you don't want to get so caught up in the moment that you don't know that what you're doing is not appropriate because those certain things wasn't appropriate for the rules at that time. Right. But now that rules are in that you can make money mm -hmm. off your name, image, and likeness, you still need to know the laws. Great you point. still need to know what's the limits and boundaries and work within the game, within the rules of the game, just like a sport. Mm. You got to work within the rules of the game and you can dominate the game. Right. But that's where I think that don't let your emotions overpower your intelligence come in because there's a lot of people making decisions in the moment and they're killing progress or productivity or earnings down the road. Love it. Because if you're not a person like a Travis Hunter or Caitlin Clark that's making significant amount of money, you're going to get paid off that collective. Mm. And then depending upon how much is dispersed through that collective. So a lot of non-famous student athletes will most benefit from their school's collective. But then I also think this is an opportunity where student athletes can be educated on financial foundations. Like what do you do when you're earning a living? Because at the end of the day, a NIL bag is not just for you to look good and drive good. Mm. Right. <laughs> it's a process to a student athlete's journey. I need to make sure this is clear that you're beginning the process on how you're going to earn a living. Mm. And so you need to have some basics of budgeting, saving, investing, and understanding of credit and debt. Now, that's something we can get into down the road, but with these NIL uh, opportunities, you got to be able to really take a look at how I'm earning and who you're earning with and not just get caught up in I'm going to look good, what, 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 what chain I'm going to buy, what shoes I'm going to buy, and what car I'm going to drive. Mm. Because this is your beginning stages of you earning a living. And if you start off with good uh, money habits, it'll increase that you'll keep the money. Mm. It almost go back to that hole in the bag uh, yeah. analogy yeah. that you give. Right. If you spend all your money, you're not going to have no money. Right. But if you manage your money right and do it the right way, you'll have down the road. So there's also even a level of there's habits that we're trying to educate student athletes to form when it comes to their money. Mm. Um, because another thing when it comes with this NIL conversation and I'm giving it from my perspective, not being a legal attorney. I'm just giving talking about what makes practical sense. Um, athletes who receive NIL deals also need to understand the tax ramifications. Mm. I heard uh, C.J. Stroud, um, uh, the Houston Texans, who played yep. at Ohio State. He was on a million dollars worth of game podcast. And um, he was saying how when he started getting money from his NIL, he got the money. He was trying to help some people out. He was buying this and buying that. And then he got hit with a tax statement mm. 
in the beginning, he said he didn't realize that I had to pay taxes on this money. Talking about before the cameras turned on, the NIL space. I know I made some money, bro made some money. It's like, you don't know until you know. Man, I got hit over the head. Yeah, me too, like, I ain't even know it. Man, I'm, I'm lending people money. I'm, you know what I'm saying? Buying what I want. I'm doing this, I'm doing that. And then Uncle Sam come knocking. What's up? Come here. And you got to pay it or you, or you want to go to jail. It's like one of the two. And you going to do it because, you know, it's just the right thing to do. But it's like, I feel like even now, like our schools got to do better. You know, like our Educate elementary. People yeah, just, like. Because I said to myself, the, the sad thing about the NIL is it's a great thing. I, I want everybody to get right. their paper, but you got dudes getting all this money that's not going to the league. They might that's not real. make it to the league. And how you going to get it? Like, how you going to, you spent all the money. So now you hit over the head. You out of, you out of school and you, you owe them 300, 400,000 in taxes that you ain't even know about. Cause as soon as the money hit, you, cause ain't nobody teaching these people right. financial literacy Absolutely. and educating them about had, the tax. I've had you take one a financial class my whole life. One. And I was my senior in high school. I didn't learn. So. <laughs> My platform is, while I'm not a NIL expert on the legalities of it, common sense tells me anytime you earn some money, you get a check. When they give you a check or earn some money, that's then created a paper trail. Right. So a good rule of thumb is if I, if someone pays me $1,000, I want to save 30 to 35% of that in a savings account so that um, you'll have the money when you got to pay taxes. Mm -hmm. Because there's two things that we got to look at. Will you receive this NIL on your social security number? Mm. Or there's some student athletes, due to how much they're making, they've gotten savvy and they've created um, a company, a LLC, right. in order so that they could do it as a business. Mm -hmm. And to my understanding, I think that's the best way, but it's also based upon what scale or true influence ability that you have on how much money you're making. Right. You know, for like for example, somebody may want an example. You know, if I only gonna make ten thousand dollars in IL, you might want to take that on your social security. <laughs> <laughs> right, that ain't too much. But man. not saying that starting a business is not the right way. Right. But for that athlete that's going to make more money, they might want to consider uh, forming a company um, or creating some type of business entity or identifying with corporate structure. But that once again, what resources do you have? Talk to tax accountants if you're gonna receive some money. Mm -hmm. Talk to a NIL sports attorney if you're gonna have if you're gonna um, be earning some money uh, through NIL. But um, we, we can't just participate in things and let our emotion overpower overpower our intelligence. Be like, oh, I didn't know. And then you then you hurting when you get this tax bill, right? Because you didn't spent all your money, right? <laughs> <laughs> you done saved the world, the right? Room. Right. And, um, you know, athletes receiving NIL deals also got to understand the difference between assets and liabilities. Mm. You see, I'm trying to come from a practical um, example that these are some things that you're going to have to do, whether you got NIL deals, whether you got a job or you have your own business one day. And so assets, things that's going to bring you money. Liabilities is going to be things that take away money. Mm -hmm. And so if a student athlete, let's say they, they make $20,000, take away 30% of that, that's like $17,000 left, to say, and they take that, that $3,000 for their taxes. Now you got to look at, do I want to buy things that I will never see a return on? Mm -hmm. Or possibly do I invest in something that's going to bring a return on my overall investment. So in other words, we don't want to just be consumers um, and just buying stuff just to buy, but be strategic in how you want to think about how you're going to spend your money, no matter how little you got or how much you got at the end of the day. But that's a whole nother concept that we could talk about down the road, assets versus liabilities. Um, and also student athletes receiving NIL, NIL deals also got to understand the difference between what I call new money and old money. New money and old money. So let's give the definition mm -hmm. of old okay. money. A lot of people see Shador and Shiloh Sanders. Mm -hmm. Their dad is Deion Sanders. Their dad is Coach Prime. Right. Coach Prime, Deion Sanders, who've been having a ton of money for years. <laughs> They was born multi in the millions. They were born in the money. Yes. Hence, I give them the example that's they come from old money. Mm -hmm. So they got a little more wiggle room. Right. right. <laughs> they got a little more boundaries uh -huh. off the money that they're getting because number one, they're earning at a higher level. 
than the student athlete that nobody knows about, but they're still contributing on their team. Mm -hmm. And so because they come from old money, they got a chance to make some mistakes. But for the kid that didn't grow up in staggering wealth or, um, you know, the kid that's just, you know, that's trying to make it. Or I give an example, the kid that was born or raised in a single parent home, um, parent trying to do the best that they have, don't make a ton of money. That's considered if you come into an opportunity with NIL, that's considered new money. So new money got to think different than old money at the end of the day. Mm. And, um, you know, those are just a couple concepts that I want to give from my level of expertise and what I share with uh, my student athletes, because I was doing a session with uh, uh, Camp McKinley in their mental Monday sessions. And a lot of students, student athletes, they were talking about the bag that they had. And then I, I and I asked the question, I said, OK, let's give the example. You made twenty thousand dollars. What's your next step? And they were talking about, I'm going to buy this and I buy that. And I mm. have asked other student athletes, I said, you know, you got to pay taxes. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, oh, I got to pay taxes. Yeah. So you made 20000 Right. But you really didn't make 20000 Right. So and then that opened the door from that conversation to talk about taxes and then talk about spending on assets versus liabilities, mm. savings, um, and all those type things. Right. Love that. All right, Lucas, so we're going to go into this next segment of the Coach's Clinic. The Coach's Clinic segment is where we will hear directly from the mouths of coaches, trainers, and experts on NIL topics. Listen to this clip from sports attorney and NIL consultant LaChana Edwards' advice to parents for student-athletes. Say this, but it's coming from a place of tough love. Stop letting your 18, 19, sometimes 17-year-old child sit in rooms with people who are 30, 40, sometimes 50, 60 years older than them, telling them to sign a contract that they have not the slightest clue of what they're agreeing to. Yeah, I know that collective is talking big game and throwing big dollars around. But at the end of the day, it's a business transaction. And your athlete is the business. So here's what you're going to do to protect them. Way before they ask them to sign that contract, you're going to ask them for a copy of the agreements that they use. And you're going to take your time. You're going to hire a professional like myself. Are you going to review for yourself every clause and every term that they're asking your child to agree to? And if there's anything that makes you feel concerned, you're going to ask about and you're going to advocate for your athlete. Your family needs to be a unified front when we're going into this industry. Because as I say time and time again, there is no one more invested in your child's success and well-being than you. And if you don't protect their name, others will profit off of their fame. Student athletes, parents, caregivers, coaches, Mentors, this information that sports attorney and NIL consultant LaChana Edwards' advice is huge. I've learned over my career when somebody says something that needs to be said, you don't need to say nothing else. Get the right information that you need to make the best informed decisions, especially when it comes to this concept of NIL, taxes, spending, so that you can make the most out of opportunity that you have. All right, Lucas, we're going to go to the next segment, which is the quote of the day. The quote of the day comes from coach Bobby Knight, who just passed away um, a little while ago. But coach Bobby Knight's quote was that I, that I use that I've been using for years. It says that the will to succeed is important, but what's more important is the will to prepare. So my advice to student athletes everywhere is get prepared with the correct information and strategy and take positive action. Student athlete world, I'm out of time, but certainly not out of message. This is the I Am Student Athlete podcast. Remember that greatness is a process and you are more than an athlete. Peace.